amigos. Cornelius? Cornelius? Komm, Musa. Cornelius, komm. Die war Gott. Die war Gott. Dann ist es hier. Dann ist es hier. Dann ist es hier. Oh
Yeah, welcome to Kimber Bushcraft and my series Vikings from A to O. And today it's about the letter D and I'll explain that a little bit later, but of course in the title you can see what it's all about. But you can see we got snow again in Denmark. Yeah, yesterday and the day before that it snowed a lot here, about uh, 13 centimeters, 30 centimeters, that much snow and uh, yeah. The forest is beautiful in this kind of weather and uh, today the sun is shining and there's no wind so it's a perfect day to make a, a trip out to the forest here. And uh, yeah, this is my food for today. I'll tell you about that a little bit later, especially the pot that I got and uh, yeah, what it is. And um, you saw I hang up my uh, utilities uh, on this little rack. Uh, that is made from a Christmas tree, our Christmas tree. I showed it before uh, in a video where I had one in my Kimber camp, a little bit bigger, but this one is cool, uh, small, and I can bring it with me on my uh, adventures here. So yeah, now I'm going to uh, start my fire using my uh, Aaron fireball and uh, yeah, begin uh, cooking this food. I'm glad you joined me on this one too. It's uh, been a while since I've been out here and uh, had you on a visit here in my little camp. So, yeah. And uh, in this uh, in this pot, I have soup I brought from back home. And uh, this pot I got from Medieval Crafts. It's an awesome pot. You should uh, be able to uh, take the heat. So I'll so see if I can uh, cook it over the fire here. I think it's okay. Uh, Medieval Craft uh, makes a lot of great stuff and I put a link in my video description for their website. It's the same company that makes the Caldron, uh, the big Caldron that I have and the Kimber Caldron as I call it. And uh, yeah, uh, good quality stuff that is uh, definitely I can recommend it. And there's water dripping down from the trees so I hope that it won't disturb my little project here. It looks good. And uh, yeah, I think I'll take some snow and put it in the pot.
Yeah. In Denmark we put these small meatballs and uh, flour balls in soup. Do we do that in other countries? Tell me that in the comment section. If that's something they do other places that here in Denmark I think it's finished now because there's meatballs in or uh, because there are flower balls in. It mustn't cook. Oops. Yeah. Very delicious. It's chicken soup. Chicken soup. And I think I'll take this one off and put my water over for my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So let's eat. Take some bread. Mm. And of course, Cornelius also like this. And we have the, the leftovers. Perhaps a little meatball for you, Cornelius. Just put it here so it can cool off. Hmm? Have some uh, bread with. Mm. I put it there. If you want it, you can take it. Yeah, and um, I try to make this video a little bit shorter than my usual videos. My wife said that it's, they are too long when they are almost 15 minutes. 50 minutes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I got a lot of response, uh, positive response for my latest video, but not so much views. And uh, yeah, my channel is not growing uh, at the moment. And I think it can be because they are too long. And people see a video that is 49 minutes or 50 minutes, 
they think, oh, it's too long for me, so uh, I'll try to make them uh, under 30 minutes and see if that helps. Uh, I feel the same when I see a video. If it's a long video, I wait for it, and sometimes I'm forgetting to watch it, and then, yeah, you know. So, um, this is my plan. Um, but it's very difficult because I have a lot of things I want to show you and tell you about. And uh, I also know that a lot of you are very happy for the long videos where I explain a lot. But to uh, reach a broader audience, I think I'll do that for a while, when it's possible. Today, as I said, it's a, a video in my series, Vikings from A to O, and the word D. And it's about Dane and Danes. And uh, of course, I'm from Denmark, so my, I'm a Dane. And uh, yeah, I made a little video, just a short one, uh, just to explain some of the uh, places that uh, Dane are, has been used during the history, uh, especially in the Viking Age. So uh, I hope you find that interesting. In Western European sources from the Viking Age, Dane are often used for people from all over the Nordic region, and the Nordic language is called the Danish tongue. In Norse, the people were called Dania, which can mean something like flatlands dwellers. The word Denmark means Danes fields or border forest, and perhaps refers to the borders between Denmark and the rest of Europe. Earliest certain signs of human presence in today's Denmark are from the Old Stone Age, approximately 10,000 years ago. We do not really know when Denmark was united under one kingdom. But from the legends we know King Dan, who may have named the country Denmark if Denmark did not name the king. And we have heard about King Skjold and his successor, the Skjoldunger. But these kings were legends. That is to say, we do not know if they really lived. The first king we know lived in Denmark was King Gottfred. Around the year 965, King Hera Bluetooth erected the great rune stone in Jelling. The stone was set in memory of Hera's parents, Gorm and Tura. The stone inscription also tells about Hera's marriage. Conquered all Denmark and Norway and converted the Danes to Christianity. On the small rune stone it is written, King Gorm made this kummels that means inscriptions after Tura, his wife, the pride of Denmark. The large runestone in Jenning is often called Denmark's birth certificate, partly because the name Denmark is mentioned in the inscription, partly because the stone is proof of the change of faith. There is a direct bloodline from King Gorm the Old to our current regent, Margaret II. The Danish flag is called Dannebro, and was established as the Danish flag in the Middle Ages and therefore belongs among the oldest national flags in the world. The myth says that Danbro fell from the sky during a battle outside Tallinn on June the 15th, 1219, when Valdemar II defeated a large Estonian force that tried to drive out the Danes. Danivirke is a system of Danish fortification in the northern part of Germany. This historically important defense earthwork across the southern border of Jutland was initiated by the Danes in the Nordic Iron Age about 650 AD. It was later expanded multiple times during Denmark's Viking Age and High Middle Age. The Dannevirke was last used for military purpose in 1864 during the Second War of Schleswig. Danelagen or Danelaw was the name of the area that the Danish King Guthrum retained as the peace agreement in Wedmore in 878. Before the peace agreement, he was king over most of England. The border was drawn across England from London to Mercy. South of the border, Anglo-Saxon law applied and the country was ruled by the King of Wessex. Danegel, Dane Debs, was the tax that foreign territories had to pay the Danish King 
in order not to be raided or plundered. The people of England and France paid, but of course the countries around the Baltic Sea also paid Danish debts to the Danish king. Yeah, a little thing about Danes. Uh, yeah, maybe there was something you didn't knew, <laughs> um, so that it could alight you a little bit. But uh, now I can see the coffee is almost, almost boiling. So in a while I have my coffee. I must say, um, Thomas from uh, Maltus, uh, the company that I work with, uh, sent me an email yesterday that a Polish, uh, actually two Polish YouTubers are using my Fireball. And one of them says that he has talked to me about it, uh, the specs and so on. And uh, yeah, uh, almost got my uh, permission uh, for using this. I don't think they are selling that uh, or anything else, but as I uh, saying, they, if uh, people are copying your things, it's because it's a success. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. I know that it's a good product, but you shall be aware that uh, maybe there will be some copies on the market that you can buy. And that's not the real Fireball from Puni, the Iron Fireball. So take care. Beside that, there's a uh, page on, on uh, Facebook that's called Kimber Bushcraft Viking Heritage, and that's not me. Uh, I don't know. I've, I uh, wrote to him, uh, said he should uh, remove this page, and I also re uh, wrote to uh, Facebook, but I haven't heard anything from them. Um, but uh, my Facebook is only called uh, Bushcraft Kimber Bushcraft. If he shut down this uh, page, I'll see if I can get the name Kimber Bushcraft Viking Heritage because that's my uh, name on YouTube. So um, I hope so. But um, yeah, uh, no harm done. Always look for my logo. Uh, this logo that I show you here, uh, this is my trademark uh, that it's the real Kimber Bushcraft Viking Heritage. Yeah. Yeah, folks, this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this little video uh, from Hammer Hills. I think I forgot to say that in a snowy landscape here in Denmark. It's so wonderful to be out here, but I don't think it will last for long. Maybe a couple of days and then the heat will smelt. It will melt the snow. Hi, Cornelius. Nice to see you. Welcome. Yeah. Again, thank you for watching Kimber Bushcraft. Cornelius and I are very uh, grateful for that and for all your kindness and support. So uh, again, bye bye and take care.